And that is why we can't have nice things. The end. Oh, hello. I was just reading some Twilight fan fiction. So, this is Robin Smirking and Reviews. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's time to talk about, well, happy 420, everybody. Uh, I've had a day. <laughs> and uh, I didn't even know if I was going to be able to do this because I worked like uh, 10 and a half hours with almost no break. And uh, so I, got, I was pretty wiped when I got home. But I pushed through and I put on Star's channel and found One Crazy Summer, I Need This Poster, uh, from 1986, with John Cusack again and Savage Steve Holland directing and writing, uh, Demi Moore co-starring Curtis Armstrong, Bobcat Goldthwait, uh, who else is in this? Oh, Joe Flaherty is in this, um, and Mark Metcalf. Those are the pretty much the big, the bigger names. Are Jeremy Piven is one of his first movies. Um, so for 420, this is the second movie. The first one was Better Off Dead from the same people. Thought it was fitting to do both. Um, I've got like three pages of notes here. I don't know if I'm going to use them all, but uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about it. So hopefully you've seen this. If you haven't, I hope this uh, video gets you to want to see it. Um, this is just as shenanigansy and no rules uh, as Better Off Dead. Um, in this movie, man, uh, uh, this one's different than Better Off Dead. And I, I think in the end, Better Off Dead is probably a better movie. Or, I don't know. I enjoy Better Off Dead, I think, more than I do. When this came out in 1986... Um, this was like a big deal for me. This movie was a huge deal. I watched this movie so much. This was one of those movies. I mean, I watched a lot of movies a lot, but I watched this one a lot when it came out. And uh, and, I, and it stayed with me. I watched this movie so much because uh, this was right around the time my parents were going through divorce. And so these kind of distractions were like huge when I was a kid. And this movie, Plus Better Off Dead, just stayed with me so hard. Um, and yeah, man, it's just like it's such a part of me that even though i watching it for the first time in a long time, um, like it has lost its luster a little bit. Only because it's more, there's a lot of like just movie happening. There's like the funny stops and then there's a movie going on. Like a different, like it becomes a something different at the end. But the journey to, to up to that point and still some other things that are all right in it afterwards. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it was, I laughed a lot though. Okay. So don't get me wrong. I laughed a lot because I really just love this world, these, this world that, uh, Savage Steve Holland has, has created. I, I kind of feel like this is just an extension of the same universe as Better Off Dead. Um, but in this, you've got uh, John Cusack's back as a guy named Hoops, uh, who can uh, never make a basket. Uh, he was supposed to get a scholarship like his old man, uh, but he's terrible at basketball. But, I mean, he, this character, again, just like Lane in Better Off Dead, he's got all these things. Like, he's an animator. He's into basketball. He's afraid of water. Like, all these things, these big character traits that they, they throw at you. Um, this guy's got, like, a lot going on in his, <laughs> in his life. Um, the movie opening with the Warner Brothers logo animated... Uh, the animation in this, the story in this, the rhino versus the cute and fuzzy bunnies uh, is hilarious. It is done throughout the movie. Uh, it is just, I love this stuff. This was like, this, because of those kind of things, like I remember the first time I saw this movie and just being like, oh my God, like the way it starts. Because it's so great, the beginning of this. Because then after it gets into a regular movie and I thought, oh, how can this be better than the cartoon? And then I realized again, just like Better Off Dead, it's a li another live action cartoon. Um, probably more in the vein of like, it's like half Better Off Dead, half like 1970s Hanna-Barbera, you know, like, you know, Jabberjaw. You know, one of those with the teens and like, I don't know. 
But uh, the kid, I love the beginning of this. You know, the rhino is looking for love. Love is is blind, can't find him. Uh, and you know, he asks the cute and fuzzy bunnies for help, and they won't help him, and they mock him, and they punch him, and they abuse him, and they take, you know, they just make him feel like shit until he reaches into his suitcase that says Beirut on it. Full spoilers if you haven't seen this movie, by the way. Um, sh and if you please see this movie if you haven't seen it. And then he, pl he pulls out an Israeli submachine gun out of his suitcase and annihilates them. And he's just like, you cute and fuzzy bastards. Um, <laughs> and I wrote down so many things for this movie. And I'm like, I'm trying to figure out how much I should talk about or not. But the, the, the story is, though, that like Hoops is um, graduating from high school. Him and Joel Murray. Uh, he's like the fourth Murray, I think, I've seen. I think, I don't know if Joel was the same brother in Scrooged, but I know Brian Doyle from, you know, started like Caddy. I saw him in Caddyshack, and he got Bill, of course. And I thought there was another brother in Scrooged. And I don't think it was Joel. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Then you, but if I'm right, this is like the fourth Murray brother, Joel, who who was great on Mad Men. Um, like twenty some years after this movie came out, Joel was always sticking around for a while. He did a lot of sitcoms and stuff. Uh, some, I think he was in the the first. Was he in the first Ellen DeGeneres show? I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong thing. But he's really great in this. Is George? Um, there's so many, I, yeah, you know, I'm going to try to like cover a lot of this, but I don't want to just spoil all the gags. I think you need gags and jokes, man. You can't just describe them. It's like talking about dreams. Um, <laughs> but I will say some of the lines because like at the, uh, when he's trying to, George is trying to read his uh, graduation diploma. Long effing day. Managed to just say effing. Um, he's reading, he's trying to read his, his diploma and he's like, what does, <laughs> says so John Cusack, what's this word? Your last name. Uh, this doesn't have as many, I, it's, yeah, when I say it, I'm not, it's like, yeah, it's a little bit better. You have to be there. That's why it's kind of hard to talk about this stuff. But like, I mean, you know how nuts your movie's going to be when one of the kids at the, uh, graduation ceremony gets killed when they fling up their hats in the air and it stabs them in the back. That's what this movie is. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, I love Joel's speech or George's speech to Hoops about how, you know, he thinks that his family thinks he's going to become a street sweeper, <laughs> which is really, <laughs> what's wrong with being a street sweeper? I don't know. I don't know. Is it a job that you're supposed to look down on? I, I never really thought about it. When I see street sweepers, I kind of feel like, like a, a Zamboni got loose. You know, like <laughs> on the roads, and I never, I kind of always think, I always feel like they're self, they're self uh, automated, like they drive on their own. I, I never really think about the person behind the wheel of a street sweeper. That's bad. Oh, that's bad then if they're calling him a street sweeper, because if you don't even really think about the person, wow, I'm blowing my own mind. <laughs> Happy 420. Uh, <laughs> but he gives him this great speech about, hey man, you know. You're not. You're great. At, you're going to be great at other things, and there's. You're not going to be a street sweeper. And it just. He's giving them this really positive message as they pass all these other kids getting their graduation cars, and he gets to his graduation car, and it's a street sweeper. <laughs> For the longest time, though, when I watched this as a kid, I didn't know what the fuck that was. I was like, man, that's like, like like a big old construction thing. And I thought it was cool. I'm like, boy, that seems kind of awesome. You can run over people on that. Um, and in this also, uh, we find out he's got to go pick up his like uh, sister or his niece or something. I think it's his sister. Um, her name is Squid Calamari. She's a little redhead. And she has a dog named Bosco. And you are warned immediately, never say anything about her dog, Bosco. And you find out right after this, we get introduced to uh, uh, Squid Calamari. She's played, played, played by Kristen Goles, who only has one other credit after this. Uh, she has only two lines in this movie, so Badger still wins for not having any lines in Better Off Dead. She gets to say a couple lines, but I mean, literally two words, though, so not by much. She's so adorable. 
This little cute little redhead with pigtails. She's got this little dog with the cone on its head. He's just a, like an old mutt looking dog. And he, that dog is adorable with all the like patches. It's got like bandages. Like it's clearly uh, just a, a haggard dog. <laughs> well, these girls are laughing at him. And uh, the, the, the crossing guard, who's uh, Ricky's mom from Better Off Dead, uh, tells him if somebody slaps you on the back while you're making that face, you're going to freeze like that. And later on, they, uh, they're laughing at the dog, mocking it again, going, Ugh. and then the little girl slaps him in the back and their face freezes him. <laughs> that way, they start running when they see their face. Even their Cabbage Patch Kid has like a face on it. And uh, <laughs> they run off and everybody's screaming. Like all the other kids nearby all start running and screaming from these girls. And this is where the line I love, like they, they almost, the Hoops and George almost run over the two ugly girls when they hit his, you know, like run into the front of his car and they all see how ugly they are and they're all like, ah, and everybody starts screaming and uh, Joel says the line, I love it. Um, <laughs> Geez, there sure are some ugly looking kids running around here. <laughs> um... We're also introduced, we were next introduced to Demi Moore's character, Cassandra, who, look, let's just, okay, another way Better Off Dead is better than this is that the character, the female characters are better in, in Better Off Dead. Demi Moore does, like, she is not, she doesn't even give a fuck in this movie at all. And this is, like, the beginning of her career. She's probably thinking she's slumming it. But, so she's not trying, and neither is the other love interest girl in this, but uh, we were introduced to her. We're supposed to care because that's what John Cusack's hoops does. Um, and they run off. She's getting, she's chased by this like pink haired spike biker, spiky haired biker guy. Um, and it's a pretty funny sequence. I mean, because Joel Murray drives off with the gas uh, nozzle still in the car and uh, attached to the car and rips the whole thing out and they're dragging that everywhere. And it's pretty funny. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they make this impossible jump onto the like the ferry to Nantucket and the, the spiky haired guy lands in the water, gets fish stuck in his head. But <laughs> after this, you know, we were introduced to Clay and Egg, who are played by Bobcat Goldthwait and a guy I can't remember who died in 1994. So like eight years after this, he was a young man. I think he was like 40 uh, when he died. But um we, they're the store twins, and like Bob Col Bob got Goldthwait's stick. I loved when I was a kid, especially in Police Academy two and three. Um, and he was doing this for throughout the eighties, but it really like looking back on it, a lot of it doesn't hold up anymore. But some of it still does. Some of the subtler stuff, the the screaming and stuff, where it's just like ah, like it that's a little much now. But, like, some of the subtle stuff is still pretty funny. He was uh, kind of like, uh, 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 really kind of under his breath talking and shit. But um, we find out that they're filming the sequel to a Jaws ripoff called Foam 2. It's about a rabid dolphin. <laughs> and I got to admit, the model of it is really great. It's really fun. Um, we're introduced to Matt Mulhern, who is the villain in this. He is Teddy Beckerstead, and he is great in this. Uh, I really, really like him. Uh, we also see Jeremy Piven here uh, in one of his first roles as his, like, goon. Um, we're introduced to Uncle Frank at his house. Uncle Frank, okay, so I was over, this was another one of my favorite running gags in movies. It's Uncle Frank... Uh, is played by Bruce Wagner, and I didn't know that name. Man, I finally know that guy's name um, because I love Uncle Frank. He is obsessed with winning a million-dollar radio contest that has slowly been driving him insane over the years. Uh, and this is the year, and he is just on the verge of mania every second he's on screen. I love it. Georgie, Georgie, what the hell are you doing in here? <laughs> Don't you know I'm trying to win some money? <laughs> Why would you people leave me alone? <laughs> well, and, and Uncle Frank just keeps paying off slowly but surely um, throughout this movie. Um, we're also introduced to Joe Flaherty and Curtis Armstrong, who gets to finally play like a normalish guy. He's just a kind of a, a, a you know kind of a sweet boy guy you know he, he doesn't want to hurt anybody but his dad is like a uh, military man and uh, I might as well start playing this trailer here's so you guys can see what I'm talking about here 
What the hell is this? I thought this was a trailer. Wow. Oh, I guess it's part of a trailer. Anyway, that'll be playing in the background. Um, <laughs> so, um, Joe Flaherty is like has a Cub Scout troop in this, and he runs it like a military, and it's really funny. Especially when we get uh, a little bit later on, uh, we also get to meet Mark Metcalf. Mark Metcalf from Animal House, and he played the master on Buffy, uh, is awesome in this gosh darn movie. Um, wow, why am I not swearing? Um, he plays Ag Aguila Beckerstead. Aguila Beckerstead. He is, he is a fucking nut job in this movie, and it is fantastic. He likes to listen to lobsters scream when he boils them. It is he is fucking having a ball with this, and I love it. I love it. Because if you thought he was weird in uh, Animal House, man, he is next level, like, shithead in this. Like, he is just chewing scenery. Um, William Hickey, the late, great William Hickey is in this as well uh, as their, uh, like, uh, Beckerstead's dad. Um, <laughs> and uh, I got to tell you, man, like, William Hickey, man, just seems like he was always old. But um, anyway, <laughs> I also noticed that like in this movie, just like Better Off Dead, there's two girls kind of like Cusack's vying for in this movie. Um, we get more Uncle Frank where he accidentally drops a radio into the bathtub with him and he blows himself up. So Better Off Dead and One Crazy Summer both have people getting blown up. Uncle Frank, though, kind of wins. Well, see, Uncle Frank has the, he gets blown out the actual window. So he wins for the actual stunt, but Better Off Dead just has the greater line where it's just like, I'm, gee whiz, Ricky, I'm really sorry your mom blew up. Um, so it's kind of like a tie. One, you know, one, they both win in the category that they need to. I don't know why I'm dwelling on this. Oh yeah, because it's 420. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> George in the beach and uh, always getting stuck underneath the uh, lawn chair guy. Who, after listening to, the, like, after seeing this movie, I couldn't hear Credence in the same way for a really long time. Because this huge guy just sitting on top of, of Joel Murray's head is hilarious. Um, there's a bar called the Dew Drop Inn in this movie. And there was a Dew Drop Inn where I lived uh, when I was a kid. I think it's just one of those uh, names that a lot of bars have. I need to just put this on, like, fucking... Whatever. <laughs> um, oh yeah, the two guys that won't don't want to give George CPR. They're fighting over who has to. It's crazy. Now let's pause. Give me a break. It's gonna be one of those nights. Um, oh, when uh, when uh, Bobcat and uh, Clay offer to uh, let Hoops, uh, friggin'. Uh, take pic draw pictures of them nude and he says like oh like I offer you my body and now I'm like I'm the jerk of the world or something it's one of those things that this is one of those movies where the lines have to be heard by the person in this especially from Bobcats because I'm not going to be all ah! I guess I just did didn't I but you know what I'm saying uh, <laughs> Bobcat getting stuck in the Godzilla costume is really funny it is really funny when you hear his voice coming out of the Godzilla thing. That's fucking funny. Uh, the gas station attendants. Okay, so these guys, man. Okay. <laughs> they go up to the poor little girl and her dog and ask her if, she, if they want her to put uh, do a mercy killing on her dog. Because uh, he looks like he's been microwaved or something. And that he doesn't. Everybody sees his dog as like a monster. I mean, the one guy's like, I'm going to have nightmares just knowing this dog exists. But uh, she gets their ties stuck in the window and drags them away in the car, assumedly to their death. We don't know. Because we know we're not supposed to, like, uh, be mean to the dog in this, so. If you've seen the trailer enough times while I've been talking, let's go back to this. Because <laughs> I don't want to keep fucking around with this damn thing. Um, yeah, so Hoops tries to go see a movie with uh, the bad guy's girlfriend, and that's just... It ends up with them on a beach uh, attacked by Joe Flaherty's uh, Cub Scout troop because they're out there on a little like 
field trip where Flaherty is describing a plane crash to children in epic detail about how they'll have to stick people's eyeballs back in with a stick. And so they're out there looking for people to help for some goddamn reason in the middle of the night. <laughs> and they attack Cusack and uh, Cookie. Uh, and this just has this crazy, like, just whole... I don't know, like, almost... It makes me think of Benny Hill for some damn reason. Oh, and yeah, Demi, Demi Moore goes to this place all by herself with a guitar, right? And she's supposed to have, like, a show. You don't see the band, but all of a sudden she's got a fucking band. Like, a whole band. I don't know, is that, the, is that supposed to be the house band? Or... <laughs> Or what? I mean, later on, she even gets, like, the waitresses up there singing with her. And I do got to give her credit. I do think that is actually Demi Moore singing in this. Um, let's see. Uh, the light fixture that they take out of the wall. And it suddenly just becomes a basketball. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Joel Murray asking, did you ever notice, <laughs> reading the newspaper, reading your obituaries, he goes, did you ever notice people die in alphabetical order? <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, and then we get to hear Bobcat Goldthwaite's uh, story about, you know, he's talking about this little fat boy. He's like trying to sympathize. Us. He's like talking about himself and he's really emotional. You know, this little fat boy, you know, and he, people said he talked funny and he didn't look like his brother and it's really sad. And anyway, it's really sweet and nice and just kind of sad. And they're like, oh yeah, you know, were you that little fat boy? And he's just like, no, you know, I just always grab him and shake him and go, why are you so fat? Why are you so fat? And then I beat the shit out of him. <laughs> uh, I put in here, bazooka distraction lobster pool. Yeah, so apparently it, they have a bazooka because the one kid's dad works for like an army surplus store. And uh, they cause a distraction and steal a bunch of lobsters and put them in the pool of Mark Metcalf there where they eventually attack Teddy and Cookie in the pool. But what they don't know is that they just put a whole bunch of lobsters in a pool from a man who loves to torture and kill lobsters. So they inadvertently just gave all these poor lobsters to a fucking homicidal maniac. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, oh yeah, the honest banker. There is an honest banker in this movie. When she says that she has the money and he just says that they, uh, they went out from under or they went over her head or whatever and they bought their land out from under her. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and he just says to her, like, Mr. Beckerstead has a lot more money than you. That's why he could do it. And he doesn't mean it malicely. He just tells her the fucking truth. And then he, when he kicks, when Beckerstead kicks the dog, I was like, oh, you gotta die, man. You gotta die. Um, but then we get the boat stuff. And it's like the worst boat race you've ever seen, especially the way it's shot. It is shot. Where they're supposed to be in a race, but every time everybody, there's like dialogue or whatever, the boat you can tell is not moving from anyone. It's, and then when they have to bust out the Ferrari engine at the end, uh, and it just works. And I guess if they put a propeller, yeah, the, it would probably work, but would it really matter that it's a Ferrari engine in it? Would it? I mean, if they designed a boat engine like a Ferrari engine, but they just took a literal Ferrari engine out of a car. That the, it was the bad guys, and they put it in the back, and it just works, and they win the race. Um, <laughs> my God! But the, then uh, William Hickey, you know, they the, they try to make a deal with the rich guys to get the house that she Demi Moore lost because that was a thing, and uh, they try to make a deal for the house for Teddy to keep, you know, all their shit uh, because it's been hanging over their heads. And William Hickey gives it, you know, they try to do it, but William Hickey gives it back and he goes, this is the true, what is it? This is the real investment, Teddy, friendship. <laughs> <laughs> then Uncle Frank wins the lottery. Then he loses it because he gets so excited, he pulls the fucking phone out of the wall. He gets the bazooka and he blows up the radio station. And that's the end of the movie. <laughs> Another movie that goes out with a bang. And, uh, like, it may not quite be as good as Better Off Dead to me. It's still really, really fun. And I don't ever see me not watching one and then the other afterwards. Um, and so uh, I do highly, 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 420, um, recommend this movie. And so that is it.
If you liked this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, all that jazz. This is Rob's Smirking Gun Review saying we'll be back tomorrow, unfortunately, with the review for Black Panther. So I've been kind of unhyping this review. So if you love Black Panther more than life itself, you should probably not watch that video because I don't want to lose subscribers. So anyway, have a great night. We'll see you next time.